Hello, in the following video, we will be seeing an overview of Shopify's storefront web components. These are a set of web components that you can include in any site to bring your store's products and content anywhere else. For example, if you have a blog in a different platform like WordPress or Squarespace and you want to add an add to cart experience to a few articles where it makes sense to do so, then by using these components, you will be able to easily accomplish exactly that. If we go here on how a storefront web components work, we can see that they are a set of HTML components that handle the complexity of querying Shopify's storefront API, letting you display products, collections, and shopping cart functionality on your website without having to write complex JavaScript code. What this means is basically that this is a wrapper to, for the Shopify storefront API, so you don't have to query that manually. In many cases, you are going to see that the data we want to query doesn't even need an API key because it is already public. It is just under a more complex API and this set of components try to simplify that process. And without further ado, let's get started. So this is the Shopify store that I'm going to be using throughout this example. Over here, we can see the products we have available. This is just the test data you get when you generate a development store in Shopify. And now let's go over here once again. And this is an empty project in Visual Studio Code. So I am going to create now index.html and I am going to add this exclamation sign to add the basic structure of an HTML file. And over here, I am going to make this a storefront of components. Now to include these components in our project, let's go over here and click on getting started. And you can see that we have to include this script tag over here first. So let's copy that and add this to the head of the document. Let's actually increase the font size as well so you can see this better. And next, we have to copy this Shopify store web component. You know it's a web component when it has two words in the HTML tag. So over here, we have this. And let's paste this over here. We only need to put over here the domain for our store. The Shopify, the .myshopify.com domain for our store will be. And in this case, that will be over here. I can grab it like this and paste it over here. Or I can just go to here and click on preview. And it is this entire URL. I can, once again, delete this entirely from here and paste it in that piece. Now, throughout this video, I will be mostly working on this index.html file. So to preview this in the browser, I have installed this live server extension for VS Code. That has added this go live button in the bottom right corner of my BSQL tab. And I am going to click on this and it will open this file in port 5500. So now if I make any changes here, such as adding, for example, hello world, and say this, you're going to see that I get hello world right in my browser. Now for styling, I will add Tailwind from the Play CDN. This is not recommended for production, but as this is just an example and for the sake of simplicity, I am just going to copy this script tag from here and paste it over here. And we should now have Tailwind available. To verify that, let's just add over here text red 500. Let's save this. And over here, we can see that we have red text. Now let's query our first product and display it in the page. So let's click here products. And let's look for the collection Snowboard Hydrogen. And I need to get its product handle. I can easily get that by scrolling here up to the bottom, clicking on edit, and the handle will be everything after product. So I will copy this. I will need to save anything here. So I will just refresh the page. And now over here, let's delete this. And let's add Shopify context. And here we have to specify the type of context this is. This is a product context. And then over here, I need to specify the handle. So I will paste the product handle over here. Next, I need to add a template. And then if I do H1, let's say Shopify data. And over here, I have to specify the query. So, query will be product.title 
once I save this, I should be seeing over here this project's title. We're not seeing anything. Let's see why that might be. And the issue is that as this store has a password because it is a development store, and as you can see over here, in development, visitors need the password to access your store. That also happens when you try to query the store's data by using the store from what components. So the solution for this is to add the headless channel. So from here, we will need to install this as a Shopify app in our store. Once installed, you're going to be seeing something like this. From here, we will click on a storefront API and click on Manage. And from here, we are going to get the public access token and copy this. Now, over here in this Shopify store, component we are going to pass public access token as a parameter and paste the token over here. And now, once I go to this tab, you are going to see over here that I get the product title. And I also have access to the rest of the product data as well. For example, if I wanted to add the description over here, I can do Shopify data query equals product dot description HTML and save this. I don't get anything over here, but that might be because this product doesn't have a description in the admin. So let's give it one. Let's generate a paragraph over here. Collection and snowboard. And let's keep this and save. And now, if I refresh this page, you are going to see over here that I get the description that I just said from the admin over here. And if I try, for example, setting this word to be bold and save. We are going to see over here that that should also be applied as well. And it took a moment to refresh, but eventually it is over here. The one the snowboard is bonded. Now, depending on the data that we want to query, we might have to use a different set of components. For example, if I wanted to show the product image here, I will need to use Shopify Media and pass the parameter over here, the query, which will be Product dot selected or first available available variant, and from that I need to query the image. And let's say that to this image I want to give it a width of four hundred and a height of four hundred. And let's save this, and we are going to see that it will take a second, but we will eventually get the product image showing over here. And there it is. We can also show the product price. We will do that by wrapping this in a P tag or in any tag that you want, really. And we will use Shopify money. The reason we have to use a different component for this is because you will usually want to format money in Shopify. So product dot, let's copy selected or first available variant. And we are going to get the price. And over here, let's do format money with currency let's save this and over here we see the price of this product now let's say that i wanted to buy this product so far over here we only have the product information but to add a buy button we will over here need to add a button of course let's add here buy and then the on click handler here will be get element by id and we need to get the store element. This is the store element. We need to give it an ID, open store. And then over here, we will call the buy now method and pass the, the event. And now, if I click on buy here, you're going to see that I get redirected to my store's checkout with this product added over here. Likewise, we also have the ability to add an add to cart button. So over here, if I write add to cart, I can then and click listener here, get element by ID. And in this case, I need to call the cart element. And I will do 
Abilene, past the event, and then show model, because the card will be a model in this page. Now, if I try doing this, you will see that this will not work because I have not added an element yet with ID card. The way to fix this is by over here, I will simply add Shopify cart and give it an ID of cart. And once I save this, I enable, I am able to add this element to the cart. I am able to increase the quantity. And if I click on checkout, you're going to see that I have all of these items added right in my cart. And you see that I got all of that for free. In this case, this page is empty, but as this is just an HTML file, I could have added this literally anywhere where HTML is supported as long as I can add this script tag to include the code that makes all of these Shopify components work. And we're going to leave it here in this video. As you can see in the navbar over here, we already saw the buy now button, the add to cart button, and we can later see the product details dialog, as well as how to query custom data. We can see meta fields, meta field references, meta objects, and even create our own custom components. You can see over here that in the built-in components, we have components for the card, the Shopify context, which we already saw, the Shopify list context, which can be useful for rendering collections, the Shopify data, which we already saw, which is used for getting, for example, the product title and things like that, the Shopify media component, which is used for getting images, the Shopify money component, which is used for rendering the price, the Shopify store, which we are for this always, that is the root component for getting the data for our store. And the variant selector. This one is very useful because variant selectors have a lot of hidden complexity in them. And this abstracts all of that. And you just have to render over here, variant selector, and Shopify will take care of it. In future videos, we can see a more complex example that uses more of these components. But for now, that's finished for this video. If you found it useful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I will see you all in the next one.